everybody. Welcome to Café con Leche. We are your host, Leslie Chacon and Jeanette, <laughs> also known as Janet. I think we need a little, we need, we need a or little bit of Jacqueline or any J name by that or Kathy. measure or better known as Kathy. I think I need some Café con Leche today. <laughs> Alrighty, so today's episode is titled, Are You Good? Dot, 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 in bed. Oh, gee, what's that? About? <laughs> this is what, um, what requires, supposedly. These are the categories or the, the things that you have to, like, check off your list to be, not to be good in bed, but it, this, what's, this is what requires you to be good in bed. Let's <laughs> move. <laughs> my sources are confidential oh, <laughs> and, and anonymous you know because nowadays like that's all you need i have very very good uh confidential sources i see i'm gonna check out what you're doing on your spare time <laughs> who determines if you're good in bed or not i mean that's do you're you really gonna ask the other person you know that has that ever happened to you where a guy will ask you like after if he was good if he was good I don't think oh so. Oh my god, that's happened to me. I'm like, <laughs> what is up with that, dude? Like, what kind of insecure people am I connecting with? That's happened to me more than once. Really? Yeah, I find that so weird. Yeah, no, I don't think I've been, I don't remember having been Practice asked, more, like... man, if you don't know if you're good or not. <laughs> like, like, do you want me to porn or something? Do you want me to fill out, like, a, do you have a survey card or something that I need to, like, fill out or something? Here's a questionnaire. Please take your time and give it to me when you're done. Yeah. So, on a scale from one to ten, you know, how would you rate this experience? <laughs> do you think you're good? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, chances are, if you if you know you're good or if you're confident enough, like, you're not going to ask the other person, like, you know, was that good for you? I mean, if you would know if you were good by her reaction. Well, yeah. I would think and so, vice but, versa, you know. But I think that comes from a huge level of insecurity. <clears throat> of course. You know, where, where these guys are, or well, I don't know, maybe they're so twisted, they're just taking, like, polls and keeping score. Who the heck knows? There's a lot of weirdos out there. No, I, I I I agree with you. I think that's just insecurity because nobody would really I wouldn't ask that from anybody. It's just like whatever. It was what it was. I know I'm good, all right? <laughs> so this is according to you know whatever Google, I guess. Um, the source. This is to be good in bed requires the following. Number one, which is the contrary of being insecure, is you know be confident. Because you have to believe in your ability. There's no second guessing. There's no asking. There's no fill out this questionnaire, please. Rate me from one to ten. You know, you don't do that. Don't be cocky. No, no pun intended. But don't be cocky. One one thing is being confident. When one thing is being cocky. So you know, when somebody's secure, you know, there's no need to be cocky. What's number two, Jay? So number two, according to this anonymous source <laughs> have a very no, confidential very yes, uh top secret source top secret very what is it, re- reliable sources yes is what they're saying nowadays so number two on the list is have no hang-ups so basically if you want to fart <laughs> if you want to pick your nose please don't fart please don't pick your burp, nose i totally disagree with all these things yeah but you know i think that regardless of how long you've been in a relationship with your significant yeah. other or temporary, you know, hey, let's have a good time, guy. Don't fart. Don't pick your nose. Don't burp. Don't do any of that stuff. It's no. disgusting. Leave that to the men. Yes. Um, you know, keep an air of mystery. But, but, but men, don't, don't, don't do that either. It's not okay to fart or... No, but they do it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I think what they mean is like, just don't be so like, oh my God. You know, like oh, I hey. never fart. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just be confident with your body, and you know, we know everybody has, you know, their stretch marks or little roll here and there, or you know, nobody's in like tip top shape, so it's okay if you don't have like a six pack or just enjoy it and just don't be so like coy and like you have to cover yourself up because oh my god, it's like you're not gonna enjoy it if that's if that's you. 
that's that's what it means. That's I think that's what we mean about like to have no hang ups. You know, there's gonna be bodily fluids. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> and sweat and stuff. And it's just like, just got to go with it, I guess. And then, of course, communicate. Unfortunately, there's um, way too many couples and people that just hook up that never really communicate. I think that that's a huge disservice that you're doing to yourself. You know, don't be afraid to talk about what you like, how you like it, yeah. how you want it, etc. It, yeah. I mean, there's no time for hangups. It's like, why would you want to do the hangup thing with this person that you've been with forever? That's the person that you should be the most open with. Yeah. Don't be afraid to, to ask for what you want because, I mean, you're going to get it from somebody Ladies, else. Ladies, that's a perfect time to ask for really what you want. Like, <laughs> oh, hey, I, I, you know, can you give me an idea? I saw this really nice pair of shoes I like in the window. Okay, baby, I don't think that's what they mean. You want. I don't think that's what they mean. Sure asking it is. You for can what throw you're... that in there. They'll never know. They'll never know. I think they mean, oh, you know, a little bit faster, a little bit slower. No, man, that's free. <laughs> I, need, I want that pair of shoes in the window. Oh, honey, can I have the pair of shoes? Sure, you can have whatever you want. Thanks. How much are those Jimmy shoes in the window? <laughs> <laughs> the one with the, what is it, Red Soul? <laughs> Oh, no, man. that's Louis Vuitton. Oh, that's Louis Vuitton. Oh, God. There you go. Yeah. I don't even know. How could I not know my shoes? Yeah, those are LBs. Yeah, just, you know, communication and just tell each other what you want and what you don't, what you like and what you don't like. This is the place to say it. Number four, be willing to try new things. Again, if your partner asks you to do X, Y, Z, do it. Because otherwise, he's going to do it with somebody else and vice versa. I mean, you know? So I think that basically in these relationships, right, You, I think everybody is too reserved for the most part. I'm not saying everybody because, of course, you have people that are just all over the place crazy. Yeah. But um, I, I just feel like because I've known from so many couples and people that I've spoken to that – They've been together for such a long time and they're still afraid to say, hey, I want to do this or maybe just not say anything, but just like do something, you know, different in the sexual yeah. world of it all, you know, and I think a lot of it has to do with them thinking, oh my God, if I, if I say I want to do this or that, I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be looked at differently. I mean, as long as. Yeah. You're not doing anything demoralizing to anyone. I think that that's fine. But hey, people have their boundaries. So I guess, you know, if you want to try something, yeah, talk about it first. And, you know, I'm sure people yeah. don't want to be tied up and beat up, but um, <laughs> some do. Maybe some, maybe you <laughs> yeah. do. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's your thing. Do, I don't but know. Maybe your partner might feel bad about that or yeah. whatever. But if, you, if you're not talking about it to try to experience something different, like, never gonna get there yeah i think you should definitely talk about it i, I know there's people that have like kind of like out there fantasies that i don't think i will be comfortable with such as being tied up i would never be okay with that i would never try that even yeah, when like, it's I think handcuffs me, or anything to be not have control i would not enjoy that yeah i don't know that i'd have such a hang up with that but i really don't want to be strangled <laughs> I've been asked to, to strangle. I could be, what's oh it called, God. dominatrix? Yeah, I don't want to be the strangler. <laughs> or the strangly. I don't want to be in a strangle situation. I don't know. What's I the think... weirdest thing out there, out of the box, thing that somebody has asked of you? Like, for you to do onto them. Not necessarily oh, as you would like to do them onto you. I don't... Hmm. Let me, let me rewind the memory box for a second. I can't really think of anything really weird out of this world that, that I've been asked to do. I haven't been asked to do a lot of things, but that was definitely the, the thing, that, the strangling. Yeah, choking. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Choking. Yeah, no, I've been you. asked. I don't want to die. I, I'm like, <laughs> no, I, not, not, I've never asked. I don't, there's not, I would never ask that from anybody. Somebody asked. For me to do that I, to actually, them. Actually, I just thought of something. Well, and I, I did. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> and they're alive to tell about it. <laughs> they live to tell. Yes. Um, so, yeah, no, I never even dated this guy. I never even, like, 
is dumb or a fucking <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I never had sex with him. Nothing. There was never no touchy feely. Nothing. Mm-hmm. No and friends I, with benefit. Nothing no, like nothing. It was so weird because I didn't want. Was to that be... the weird thing that? <laughs> no, that was the weird thing. So I don't know. One day we were talking about something, and then he was talking about those balls, those Asian balls. I was like, oh, oh the the ones that you put in your hand to like de stress. No, like the... chica. <laughs> We're calling the stress, de-stressor <laughs> balls. What balls? Um, I don't know, some balls there. And, and I don't remember if he says they go in the vagina or in the anal. But what are they made of? Anal. Oh, like the little string that has little balls attached. I don't know if it was like a string of balls. You know. Like two you balls. know. I really don't. Want, I don't remember. <laughs> but we were talking about that and I was like, what the hell? I was like, dude, I don't even know you like that. And we're talking about like we're going way like off course right now. So, I don't know. I think that was, like, the weirdest thing. That somebody made. mentioned, like, they would want to try that? Yeah. That they would want to try it or they would yeah, want yeah. you to try it? Well, well I, I would think with me, right? Because oh. he's talking to me about this crazy thing. Well, I don't know. Where, Guys like, like to, you know, backdoor what? stuff, too. Oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, but that's not weird. What do you mean? That's not weird. That's, like, not a weird thing that isn't common. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people do that. The, the ball thing? No, Chica. <laughs> The anal sex. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Who's on first? <laughs> I'm saying that if the guy wanted for you to try that on your body parts, or uh-huh. if he was saying that he would like to try that on his. Oh, I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> I just thought that that was odd. I was like, okay, balls. I was like, what are these? What are these balls? Like, I think I remember. Like I, had, I had heard of those balls, but I really. I think I remember hearing something about that. It wasn't like a Sex in the City episode, like Samantha tried one of those things, that it was like a pearl. Somebody yes. gave her, right? The guy that yeah. used to have the hotel. But Samantha tried everything. That yeah, she did try everything. I mean, H She's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to Samantha. Yes. Ching, ching. Yes, good for her. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, like, you got to try new things with your partner because otherwise he's going to try it with somebody else. I just think guys, especially guys, because I don't think women are that have that many fantasies, you know? I beg to differ. I think that women do, but they're just so suppressed, and I don't think that a lot of them want to say anything. They because are. Because they may feel they're going to be judged, or maybe yeah. it's dirty, or I don't know. Get over it. I think, I think, I mean, I, I just, I think for guys, like especially like my view on why guys don't tell the women what they want, and maybe at the beginning they kind of like, want to but i think they have this idea of like their wife is not their wife is like the mother of their children so it's like just like missionary with her you know like and then they want to try the I rough think, stuff and yeah, like the, the things that they watch what? in porn with like somebody else that's, you know that's bull. it is bull but it's like they see you as like this i don't know pure person like you know my baby's come out of I don't added, know I don't that know. they think of, like, I, I do agree that some men may think that way, but all in all, I think she kind of needs to see that I've got out if they're thinking that, where it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a good excuse for me to go somewhere else. Like, why wouldn't you do that with your spouse? No, I don't think, I, I don't, I don't think they see it as, I don't think they see it as I can do that with my wife. Like, I don't, I, let me rephrase. I don't think they, they, they think of it as. I can't do that with her. I think what they think is like, she's not going to let me do this to her because like, you know, she's my wife. Like she's going to probably feel that I'm a freak, that I'm like watching porn, that I'm like, whatever. That's why you have such a high divorce rate. With yeah. Love. Because that's another topic. Also. I think no, if people have better right. sex, I'm not sure if the love will be there, but there will be a lot of less divorces. <laughs> that's what I think. Well, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's pathetically. Yeah insane that <laughs> that people are married for so long and then they don't even have sex it's just ridiculous yeah. whatever that's another episode so i asked you what's the way to think somebody has asked you to do like what is the one thing that you wouldn't do well i think the i mean the strangulation be... thing like i don't want to strangle anybody and i don't want anyone <laughs> strangling me um what else would i do like you know i've i've heard of the whole beating people beating each other up no. You know, not like the dominatrix Not, not, te- thing. not uh, what is it, Fifty Shades of Grey? No, game but room not like that. Like, I've seen things, like, weird. You know, I've heard of, like, some people, like, to be hit hard. Oh, no. 
you know, no, I'm not doing that. Well, um, n- not in the face anyway. <laughs> no, not in the face. Not the face. Um, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, oh, I know. I don't want to have sex with animals. Ew. No. No, no, that's like no, <laughs> never. Come on, dude. But we're we're. This is a broad, like this is a not a broad range of topics here. You got there's all kinds of crazies out there. Yeah. No, yeah. But no. That's so not, I don't want to have sex with animals. Never, ever, ever, ever. No. Yeah. So maybe that's maybe there's more than one thing that I can <laughs> do for sure. One of the, I don't want to be strangled, and yeah. I don't want to have sex with animals. Thank you. Let's say like one of the regular things that everybody, I guess. Maybe guys want is like, you know, swallow. Let's, like, let's never. Stick that to will never happen. Regular schmegular. Regular schmegular. So, number five, be vocal. And that's a little different than communication, meaning let yourself <laughs> enjoy the moment verbally. You know, moan, scream if you have to, if you feel like it's, you know. It's been shown that, especially for women, the more vocal their sexual partner is, and guys are usually not that vocal, I don't think. It arouses the woman even more. But I think too much screaming is a turn off for me. For, you know. Have you had a guy scream? No, it's creepy. <laughs> no. No, guys, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, no. <laughs> that's hilarious because a few nights ago I was channel surfing and I came across <laughs> when Harry met Sally. Oh. And it was the orgasm scene oh, at the restaurant. Yeah. And it was so hilarious because she starts <laughs> And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at her like, what the Best heck scene are you ever. Doing? What no. are you doing? And then she goes off. No, he's like, are you okay? Yeah. Is the sandwich okay? Like, you are, you? Water? are you okay? And then she's on, you know, she goes through this mm. whole mm. orgasm mm. thing. Like, it was hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah, because that's the whole thing that he says. Like, women can fake it. She's like, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Guys can definitely fake it. Cannot fake it. Women? Yeah. Have you yeah. faked it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Raise your hand. I, I hate to admit that. Yes. One too many times. Yeah. That that I should have never done. Yeah. But, yes. And, but also being too quiet is a turn off, too. That's so boring. That's so boring. I, you know, the older yeah. I get, the more bored I am. It's like, <laughs> wait a second. What the hell? And then I'm like, what? What was that? I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> It's weird. It's like it's I'm, we do. Yeah, it's like almost like I'm becoming like the guy mentality. Like I think a lot mm-hmm. of men, you know, mm-hmm. when they're with a woman and the woman just lays there, I'm sure they're thinking all kinds of stuff. Like, oh my god, this is like a dead fish. Yeah. And then so it, sometimes, not that the guy's a dead fish, but I'm thinking like, okay, where's the spunk in this? You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, come on, dude, you, you amp it up a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Be- before or during because before god there's like there's no before anymore there's no like foreplay guys are not good at that that's up to the woman well, unfortunately yeah i'm <laughs> sitting on the sidelines <laughs> with that one because then i'll be throwing a lot of people under the bus and they're shanky love making tactics but whatever number six you love to give as much as you take yeah correct <laughs> I know. I, I mean, I, I obviously enjoy when I enjoy it, <laughs> but, but I enjoy it as much as when, you know, my partner enjoys it. It's like, go, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, but you know what, even, myself in the back. Even like Because again, guys can't fake it, so you know. Yeah. Even like couples that are together that are just dating or even married couples, I've, so many people have mentioned to me that they don't want me to have oral sex with them. Oh my god, I hear or that. Their wives or I hear that. Like especially ladies. I what know. Is wrong with you? I hear that. Well, did you hear that DJ Khaled was like saying that he doesn't he doesn't do that to his wife? Oh yeah. And everybody like on social media like blasted him like, dude, that he doesn't do that at all, at all. But he wants it done. Of course. Yeah. But I guess she doesn't care because she has millions and millions of dollars and she doesn't, she could care less. Yeah, I don't get it either when it's like, guys are like, oh, you know, whatever, I just get it on my birthday or whatever. It's like, why That's are women, why are women not 
willing to do that. Because that just goes back to the whole thing where they don't even want to be together. They're not in love. They're just there out of habit. And, you know, it, it becomes a routine. And, it, and it, it's not even something that they desire to do. So it, it really becomes this chore, yeah. I think. I've heard, I don't know if it's a rumor, you know, like, I don't know if it's a true thing. And, you know, Jewish women let me know. But I've heard that, especially for Jewish women, they don't do that. Like, that's only, I've like, on their too, birthday. I've heard also that, like... Birthday that, anniversary, just, like, you know. Yeah, that sex happens through a sheet, but... No, but that's, like, you know, really sheet. religious or orthodox yeah, women. Orthodox. I mean, regular, regular schmegular. Regular <laughs> Jewish women. I've heard that that's, like, they don't really do that. They don't, they don't perform oral sex on their well, husbands. there's a lot of stereotypes on oral sex, which... What do you mean, like what? Get into it, get into it. Get into it. The backlash of everyone <laughs> telling us we're racist. <laughs> what? What does that have to do with race? Because I heard that black guys don't like to do that. Don't like to go down on women? Yeah. I don't know about that. I, I don't know. That. That really? Is, is a huge stereotype that I've always heard. Why? I've never heard of that. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. Interesting. Gustavo. Inquiring minds want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Well, for Latins out there, we do and they do. Anyway, number seven, do it with the lights on. Don't be afraid to show your bodies and to see each other's bodies because... That's another big hang-up that people have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like leaving the light on. Yeah, for sure. I used to be like that. I think me too, but not anymore. Not anymore. I don't know. Not. I'm like, dude, turn the I lights don't on. The lights on. Like, I don't even know if the lights on anymore. How about that? <laughs> Who cares? Uh, all, all I'm saying, like, everything. Water below lights. The place. Water lights. I don't everything know. Everything's all over the place. Who's looking at lights? My God, look at this. 2011 survey by Adam and Eve. You know Adam and Eve. That sex. I uh, do. Whatever. They found that only 10 percent of people surveyed admit to doing it with the lights my god that is sad because honestly like right there when you do it when you don't care if the lights are on or off or whatever you know that really shows how sure you are of yourself and that's sexy people come on (laughs) and men are visual creatures so just enjoy it don't be so hung up about if you're so hung up about your body and your guy doesn't have a hot body just think what am I so hung up about when he has una panza? No, but but honestly, guys do not care. They really don't. No, when they they're in the really moment, they don't do care. not care. And us women, we care even less. I think, right? I think we're a lot more forgiving. Not yeah, not about our bodies, but we, about like the guys' bodies. I think so. Yeah. We're so like whatever. I dude, think if like, you're in you love know? with a guy, you're more forgiving. Even if um, you're not in love with a guy, it's like. Well, you have to be attracted. There's got to be an attraction, but whatever. It's just, you know, like, just enjoy it. Don't, God, it's just, it's not, it's not marriage. It's not, it's just sex. We're just talking about sex. Just have fun. Number eight, Jay, take it away. So, like we were saying, you're in the moment. Be in the moment. Don't, this is another huge thing, I think, that a lot of people do in relationships and or marriage. It's normally the spouse, right, the, the man that comes up to the woman and initiates and whatever. And then the woman is always saying, I stop, I can't, no, I have to do the dishes, no, yeah. I have to, yeah, I have to throw the laundry in the washing machine, oh my god, nah, nah, nah. No, guys, that is like, I've heard this from a bunch of married people too, Yeah, that is one of the biggest relationship killer yeah. i've heard so it's romance many romance men. killers you know yeah, it's I've like heard so many men say to me you know and i try and then i keep getting shut down and you know it's like I yeah can't, I and it's like you have to schedule I it and dishes and what I, women oh, it's wow. it's only gonna last like five minutes anyway so it's yeah. like <laughs> can't just go back to seconds sometimes. i mean honestly <laughs> can't you just like put the dishes away for five minutes okay you want to now okay let's go you know 
And that's yeah, it. But unfortunately, it's bigger than that. You know, when when that starts happening, it's yeah. because it's a, it's not about the sex. It's about yeah. you know, it, there's no desire. Yeah. you don't desire this person anymore. There's so many deep rooted issues. Well, that, that too, but it's yeah. also like the women is like, oh, he wants to do it now, but I have to do this, and then he doesn't help yeah. me, and blah, blah 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 blah. But you know, like, just give it to the guy, and then you go, and then you're like, you know, that's that they're more open, I think, to like talk about everything else, and then you tell me. Okay, then I'll do this for you, but then you do this for me. I don't know, just like... I don't know, send the kids God. to somebody's house and go crazy. Have a nine and a half weeks, uh, you know, marathon at your house. I don't know. Go do Again, something. Again, it's only going to be like five to ten minutes. It's fine. The kids can, you know, watch TV for ten minutes. Lock yourself in the bathroom. <laughs> like, honestly, it's, it's, it's not going to be like, you know. It's ten minutes, you guys. Number <laughs> nine, you have sex to have fun purely for it. It's not a chore unless you're, you know, trying to have a baby. I sympathize, you know, I'm sorry. I know that there's, you know, people out there that are like, it's become a chore for them. And, you know, it's a romance killer again. But try to, you know, the same thing. Don't schedule it. Not everything has to be scheduled and everything has to be planned. And it's like, just do it. Like Nike says, just do it. So there's a 2011 survey study revealed that most women have sex as a sense of obligation that's is, sad which is kind of like we, what we were talking about yeah. before so a study commissioned by healthy women showed that 66 percent of women are having sex just to get it out of the way oh my god so actually <laughs> i'm surprised that that number is as low as it is really yes wow because i mean based on conversations that i've had based on shows I've seen based on things I've read, I really do think that that number is higher. Do you think people are just not... God, because who doesn't like having sex? I don't know. Is it just the person that you're doing it with or just... I mean, I know people are exhausted and people are have so many things on their mind, but I don't know. It's like somebody tells me. It's just that relationships are You know like that work. song? Be that thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of work that people, both sides, I, I believe, have to put into keeping the romance alive, you know, doing little things for each other, and actually really desiring each other. Because you really got to like the person you're with, not only love them. Yeah, you got to like them, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And so you have to, you know, guys, keep it alive, you know? You marry well, this women person too. for a reason. Women too. No, but I, I mean guys, I'm, I'm generalizing. Yeah. But, you know, so get the, get your guy involved in certain things, you know, in the kitchen. Cook I mean, together. Have a glass <clears> of wine <throat> together. You know, yeah. smack each other's asses. I don't know. Do something. Yeah, yeah right? be, be a little bit inappropriate and be playful. a little bit playful. And, I mean, I don't, I don't, um, I mean, I think men want it all the time. A hundred percent of the time. They're always thinking about it. So I don't know why we make it so hard for them sometimes. Maybe we're going to be like, you know, be getting calls or whatever from like feminists. Like, dude, it's like, you got to. It's not a job. And and don't look at it because, I mean, this survey is, is very sad that it says that women just do it to get it out of the way. You know, it shouldn't be a chore. It shouldn't be a job. It shouldn't be a burden. It shouldn't be scheduled. Yeah. So when you're together make time for each other even if you have a house full of screaming kids you know sit down together unite have a united <laughs> front sit in, you know on the couch together have a glass of wine let the kids run around act crazy who cares but at least you guys are bonding you're spending time together you know that's 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 where i think a lot of it goes wrong you know like I, I i get what they, they... start detaching <clears throat> yeah i mean that's, yeah. it's very normal i think well you know we can have like another episode of just that's you know, portion of like marriages and why people stay married and all that stuff and how hard it is to keep the romance alive. And I, I'm not married, so I can't really, you know, speak to that. But I think what they mean, and I, I hope this is what they mean, like people, it is a job in a way, like you have to work at it every day to keep a relationship alive and to be, I mean, it the love and the attraction, I think has to be there. Everything else you need to work on. If, I mean, if that's not there, that's not there. But I do get the sense, I do get what they mean, like, 
not to get it out of the way, but that it is a job and that, you know, you have to put work on, work in it every day. But yeah. sex is a part of it. It can't, I mean, you can't take it out of the equation. Correct. And that leads to what we've been saying all along. Basically, listen to each other, you know, communicate, and don't be afraid to try the wacky things that each of you suggest. <laughs> the freaky things. Who knows? You might like it. Try it, Mikey. You might like it. <laughs> He likes it. Mikey likes it. Number 10, listen to your partner. Again, this is not so much yes communication, but remember what we said, ask to tell them what you want. Also listen to what he or she wants. You only get what you get when you ask and ask and you you shall receive. And number 11, don't take yourself too seriously. Sex is funny or it can be it's not necessarily like in the movies all romantic and everybody comes at the same time (laughs) but it's if you're doing it with the right person it should be funny it should be fun you laugh you're like relaxed you know sex and laughter are connected in the way that they both make the skin feel more sensitive and build more neural pathways in our brain So if you're having yourself a giggle, you know you're rocking your partner's world hard. (laughs) (laughs) And if not, try, try again. (laughs) Keep trying and you start all over again. Number one. (laughs) This is quite amusing. How do you know you're good in bed according to God? Oh, God. Okay. So either number one is because he went through his whole contacts and nobody else gave him the time of day, <laughs> or you're really that good and that's what he remembers and he wants that again. Yeah. Your ex contacts you years later. Yeah. If you're a girl and, and a guy that you dated, you know, years ago still hits you off or like, even if it's like, obviously for like a 3 a.m., you know, like booty call, your new guy is going to be like, oh, she's good at bed. <laughs> if he ever sees that text come in your bedroom skills not your personality is what keeps them around now mind you this is according to guys yes and this is obviously this is just to you know for that kind of relationship because obviously for a certain you know this is only a certain amount of time of you know if that's what they're looking for but there's some people that are like crazy out there when you know when when everybody's like what is he seeing her? Eh. <laughs> That's what he sees in her. <laughs> That's what he sees in her. She is freaking amazing in bed and vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, number three, if you lick your lips, bite your lips constantly, guys see that as a indication that maybe you're That's, good with your lips. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's so stupid. I think it's kind of sexy, you know? Yeah, like, but that's stupid. So is LL Cool J like? Uh, uh yeah. Kind of get at that all the time. I think is no, you but think that when he does that, he's thinking, "Oh my God, I'm so hot!" Like I no. want everybody like to want me. Well, I don't I'm know. Like super awesome in bed. Listen, he I does would... look, by the way, like he's super awesome in bed. I would totally <laughs> go down. I'm like, no. I'm not even I'm down. Like, down, I'm down. That. <laughs> and I don't even know him from a hole in the wall. Yeah. It's sexy. Yeah. It is. So maybe that's, you know, where they they see that. Number four, you're a closet freak. I agree with that. It's always the crazy ones. And I would add to that the quiet ones. People that are the quietest, calm waters run deep or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, so definitely. that's funny because I'm normally quite reserved <laughs> when I don't know people. People are thinking like, it's always the not quiet the ones. the closet freak. Yeah. Group. Closet freaks. Mm. I'm gonna keep using that and create an air of mystery for yeah. myself. Yeah, <laughs> or if you're like super shy or whatever. Yeah, when the yeah. lights go off, the whole uh, you can dance thing. I, I agree with that. that. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, I always thought about say that. that for guys, right? Like I've heard that yeah. more for guys. Yeah, like if the guy can't dance, forget it. Malawa. True, because it's like. The way you move on the dance floor is the way you move. But I don't know. Some of those cuckoo freaky freaks and then do like uh, an Elaine and then some <clears throat> Seinfeld dance on the dance floor. Well, you that's never not. Know. But you're not. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I rather then again, maybe it is true. <laughs> I'd rather try somebody that dances well than you know that stands in the corner, you know, like I don't know, you doing the, know. the 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 sprinkler, yeah. <laughs> the pizza, the, <laughs> the Q tip, yeah. you know, all that stuff. Like, no, I think I'm okay. I think I, I agree with that. Yeah, I've always I've always thought about that. I take that. it back. <laughs> they they see it as you won't be unhinged in the bathroom in the bedroom if you're not unhinged on the floor, on the dance floor. Yeah. And this is obviously no alcohol included, people. Because <laughs> everybody dance. Like, Vodka says, trust me, you can dance. So, this is yeah. not... Everybody this thinks is they're John Travolta without, all of a sudden. Yeah, without alcohol. Number six, again, you're emotionally unhinged. Yeah, the same way. If you're a little bit cuckoo in the head, you're probably... <laughs> you're a freak in the bedroom, yeah. I don't know. Number seven is you have a reputation of being good in bed. Yes, guys do talk. I don't know about that whole you have a reputation. I think that's just that you're a big slut. I don't know. Well, yeah, but that means you're good in bed. This is not for marriage, Jay. This is for... <laughs> this is if you're good in bed. I, I forgot, I forgot. This, this is, is not... Guys. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. And this is only if you... Well, the same thing. If a, if a guy... If a girl hears that the guy's good in bed, you're not looking to marry the guy. It's just... It's just people... Are you good in bed? That's all we were talking about. Yeah. Friends with benefits. Let's let's call it that. I guess. Yeah. Number eight. If your ex is obsessed with you, same thing. Chances are because you're good in bed. You know, a little obsession. Yeah, I know a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> if you swear like a sailor, because again, there's some correlation with lack of inhibition with your words and lack of inhibition with sex. That's dumb. <laughs> that number nine is dumb. You think? Yeah, that's just dumb. That's a little out there, right? Yeah. And number 10 and number 11, because, again, this is according this to is guys. This so stupid. <laughs> it's not stupid. This is like, no, this but is what they stupid. think. No, it's It's stupid. Number 10, ladies and gentlemen, if you are intelligent. Which is the opposite of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this should probably be number one, but no, no, it's number 10. So don't even worry about being intelligent, because this is like, this is so stupid. <laughs> you don't even have to be intelligent. You just gotta throw on the glasses. That's all. Exactly. And act like- because honestly, it's not that you, it's not that they take the time to know you're intelligent. Is that they if they see you dressed like in a sexy librarian, uh, you know, with like your hair pulled up and I, you know, glasses. wearing glasses. That's yeah. they think that's sexy. Um, no, but they think that you're like a freak in the bed in the bedroom if you're dress like that because you're intelligent and you're dressed like a librarian that you're like so awesome in bed yeah because they see you maybe like reserved like yeah. you're bookish and you're like whatever and then when the lights turn off you're gonna like Lord. pull your hair down and you're gonna toss the glasses to the side Where's you're gonna the rip Dewey over decimal system you're gonna <laughs> rip open the the cardigan you know that's that's what they think of you know intelligent oh, and God. number 11 you get passionate about other things because passion equals good sex. If you're passionate about some things, you might just be passionate about sex too. Okay, so we've been talking about what to do, like, you know, to be good in bed and what's considered good in bed. But how do you really know if you're good in bed besides asking the people, you know, keeping a, a, a survey or a scorecard? Gee, you take a quiz. <laughs> you take a quiz. And these are some of the questions that come out in the quiz. Number one is, well, not number one, one of them is, do you have a lover? And these are the choices. Yes, we've been together for a while. No, I'm looking. Yes, um, not a lover, but a vibrator. I'm a prostitute slash toy boy. I mean, you know, these are the choices. What? Are, let me see what else. Uh, what do you like to Can do? Can you repeat the question, please? <laughs> Do you have a lover? These are the the choices. Yes, we've been together for a while. No, How I'm looking. How come they don't have like booty call stuff on there? Because when I was trying, when I was doing yeah. this quiz, I was a little insulted. <laughs> that, that choice wasn't there. Yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, what about if you're not a prostitute, but you are, well, are you, you a toy just, boy? Like I'm not a toy boy. Last time I checked, because it says I'm a prostitute slash toy boy. No, negative. <laughs> So, and then I was like, what about for people that just are casual? Yeah. There's no option for us. Yeah. Do you have a lover? Do you have a lover?
lover. You just go straight from being lover. committed and being with somebody for like a million years, a vibrator or a prostitute. Or oh, a prostitute, yeah. Those are those are your choices. That's it. That's, That's all it, you get. Man. That's all you get. What positions do you like? Missionary, doggy style. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Reverse cowgirl. And then these two got me like, hmm, I gotta Google this. Wheelbarrow, which when I saw the picture, I'm like, okay, you know, I know what that is. But Dirty Sanchez. That's disgusting. <laughs> This is so gross, people. I don't know. I've even people, heard of this. There is a lid for every. Pot. Oh my god, this is so disgusting. So this is what it means to do the dirty Sanchez or to oh. have the dirty Sanchez done onto you. Viewer discretion advice. It's basically anal. <laughs> I feel like yeah, I, I just I that. just throw up a little bit in my mouth. Um. <laughs> Okay, so this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it because I don't know how to describe it. This is a sex act where feces is smeared onto the partner's upper lip. <laughs> this is so gross. Okay, so basically the guy has anal with you and then he <laughs> smears a little bit from his penis. You know, and I'm then, wishing at this point right now we were on video so you could really. Oh see my god, this is so gross. My reaction. This is disgusting. Uh, is this like? Does this go along with like people peeing on each other? Like I. Well, that's called the golden each- shower, right? Yeah, yeah. But I thought peeing on each other at first when I heard it, I was like, "Ew, that's disgusting." But I kind of got like. What? I'm like, <laughs> no, not that I've ever peed on anybody or been I think peed on. I completely, I'm like, this okay. is a completely different, like, you know, number one and number two now. Yeah, so I was like, I'm what like, are you going to okay, do? Okay, so I'm kind of getting used to the whole pee, you know, thing. Oh, no. no. That's disgusting. That I, I know, but it's not that I want to do it or that I want it done on me, but I'm kind of like, okay, you know. You, no. Kinda, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and oh. then you come up with this. Come on. I now. didn't come up with it. I didn't come up with it. Oh my god, this is so gross. I'm trying to I'm trying to be progressive and understand people. And then this comes at me. So this is a uh so you basically you ask for a number two now. <laughs> Can I have a number two? Oh, Lord. You know? This is um oh my god, you get like a feces, you know, poop. That's disgusting. Poop poop mustache. <laughs> um this is okay so supposedly it's not true like supposedly this thing does not exist like this is just fictional and nobody has ever done it i guarantee some people have done it i guarantee like some people like you know Anyways. so yeah so let me see what are what are some of the what are some of the other questions let me see and then we're going to tell you you know you know we both took it and then we're going to tell you what our scores were which is a little i don't like wah, wah, wah. how do you like to start talking about like foreplay a romantic bath and massage or hey i'm horny let's fuck (laughs) after a date (laughs) lots of kisses hey you want to play or him or her coming out in some sex suit these are like some of the choices and then which type of suit naughty nurse filthy maid sexy schoolgirl, kinky devil dominatrix or you're not into suits. <laughs> that was my, that was my answer. Actually, not into suits. What you gotta put on some suits, girl? Suits, no. Yeah, you gotta throw on some of that <laughs> stuff and jazz it up a bit. You gotta be dazzle it. Be <laughs> dazzle it. So if you want to take this quiz, you know, just I guess Google "Are you good in bed?" quiz. <laughs> many of them will come up. Oh my god, I'm still thinking about that dirty Sanchez. That's so gross. What did you get on the quiz? What was I, your score? My score was a 75. <gasps> you were slut. <laughs> and, and, and it said that, and I quote, which was quite uh, insulting, I may add. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I got a 75, this thing says, yeah, we both got kind of like not the same result because I got a 68%, which means I got some work to do. Yeah, it says, you're pretty good. I'd have you, mind you, none of this has punctuation. I'd have you, but there is still better out there. The nerve. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, apparently there is because Jay you, got a 75. Yeah, <laughs> a you need to catch 
them up soon or your fans will lose interest. Keep it up and you could shortly become a god of love. It's a good thing that I'm not offended so easily. Keep it up means we gotta do, we gotta retake that quiz. <laughs> yeah. And do, Whatever. maybe we gotta try the dirty fan channel. Oh, no. no. That is no, disgusting. No, 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 no. Never. Never. No. So, some of the other, you know how we, we talked about, like, if you're a good dancer, which I, I believe that. I've always thought of, of that. But what about if, what do you think? Who, who do you think is better in bed? Chubby? People in general, not men and women, just in general, or skinny people? <laughs> So I'm a little bit on the chubby side and you're a little bit of this, you're more definitely on the skinny side. So it's like, I don't think I've ever had what a chubby guy. Are you a racist? Like, like a little, <laughs> a little no. what do you got against chubby people? Um, well, you know, guys aren't always their fittest. So I mean, <laughs> what do you consider chubby? Like what's chubby? Well, Maybe we should start there. What do you consider that. chubby? Racist. <laughs> <laughs> Skinny bitch. <laughs> you freaking skinny bitch. I would say like over 180, but not buffed or toned. Like if you're over 180, if you're already born, yeah, but it like depends how tall you are. I mean, yeah, but you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, what is considered chubby? Yeah. I don't know. Like, really, like a heavy set guy, I've never been with. Well, I, I have always thought that. Chubby men are better because, not because of their stamina, but because they have had to work harder for it, have hard to, you know, this is what I would think. And then this may be my, my own insecurities. So I, I don't know. Because you... There's plenty of chubby people that are like very secure. I'm very happy with. So you're saying that but, they're eager to please, and maybe that's why exactly, they're yeah, more, yeah. Okay. They they are more eager to please. That's maybe it's harder maybe for I'm them. Just looking in the wrong place. Maybe I should <laughs> stop being a racist. You gotta be a racist, <laughs> and you gotta be more of a chubby chaser, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I do, I do believe that is true because you know, like a buff guy is like I can have anybody I want, but they don't really. They can have many women, probably one after the other but they don't really take the time to perfect it yeah. their skills so that's just what i think and i wasn't totally wrong because according to this uh, they did a study in turkey for a year people okay so this shit is legit okay <laughs> in turkey <laughs> <laughs> in turkey <laughs> not eating turkey but in turkey this is what they did they they studied the correlation between the BMI, which is your body mass index, and the ma- the male sexual performance, and they and they found out that chubby men, and again, I don't, I guess I don't know exactly what they consider chubby, like how much they weighed, you know, what their height was or whatever, but chubby men lasted longer in bed than their thinner counterparts. Chubby men lasted seven point three minutes, which is like what? Oh lord. <laughs> have low expectations oh my god 7.3 minutes in bed versus 108 seconds for thin guys which means it's a minute and 28 seconds people and the reason why which might not be so sexy (laughs) it's because men with excess body fat last longer in bed that has to do with hormones because um men that are on the heavier side um, men with, you know, with, with more fat, they have higher levels of the female estradiol sex hormone. So this basically apparently disrupted their body's natural male neurotransmitter chemicals and slowed their progression towards orgasm. So basically, iron- and ironically, and again, not that sexy, the less masculine their bodies appear, the better lovers they prove to be. So I don't know. <laughs> Now if I want to have sex with a chubby guy, <laughs> I think now I'm the racist. So you're having you're having sex with a girly man. Oh no! <laughs> so no, thank you. That's okay. I don't think we're being racist when we're saying that. I think we're being more discriminatory. Yeah, racist is it's not the right. It's word. harsh. It's a big word. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, going to the chubby side again for some guys, guys like chubby women what they call big mamas 
because they feel they're they're squishy. They're squishy. <laughs> they're squishy and they're soft. <laughs> Mind you, this is according to guys. <laughs> and I shall call Again, you squishy. Again, according to guys. <laughs> Where's my squishy? Uh, according to guys, there's six types of women that make great sexual partners. One of them is chubby women slash big mamas. And or squishy. Or squishies. They feel that thinner women are not easily, you know, satisfied because I guess they have more stamina. For us chubby girls, it's like, oh, please me. I'm done. <laughs> So I guess they like that, that we, you know, we maybe just can do it once. We don't have that much stamina. So they're like, yeah, you know, big macho, you know, like, yeah. you know, like pounding on their chest. For thinner women, I guess it's more of a challenge to keep. That's why we go to the know. gym so much, bitch. <laughs> Get to it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why they like chubby women, I guess. And short women, yay. <laughs> Because we're easier to maneuver uh, for positions, obviously, such as the Jody Sanchez. No. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> and this is another thing, like, they, talkative women, it's another, other, you know, the six type of women that they find attractive. Women who don't wear makeup. I don't know why. That's a lie. I don't know why. That's a huge lie. Yeah. And women of color. So you put a woman that's all, you know, maxed out. She has all dressed up with makeup all over her face. And then here comes the no makeup girl. <laughs> she looks like she works in a thrift shop with glasses on. You really think that they're going to be. Well, according to this, yes. That if you chick, are 5'2 or shorter, if you shit. weigh. <laughs> I don't know what pole. Of if you talk guy. a lot, if you don't wear makeup, and you are, you know, uh, I don't brown, know which guys <laughs> they pulled for this, but this is a huge horny lie. guys, horny guys. Yeah, what they did. it's a lie. <laughs> what, come on. Yeah, you know, I guess you, you got to touch on the facts in the the part that um another reason maybe things that don't make you. This is like the 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 opposite side. Things that might not make you so good in bed. You know, your culture maybe has some sort of... Um, well, yeah, I think culture plays a huge role in, in how you perceive sex. Yeah. I think also if your parents are very strict and they come from a very rigid background, that that's imposed on you when you're young so unfortunately you grow up with this idea that it's that way you know? i've heard recently I've, and i can't remember who told me but there's like a, i've heard a couple of people tell me recently that their mom especially maybe i don't know if i saw this on tv i don't know i don't remember like their mom especially made them feel that sex was a bad thing here to four, they are not very open, you know? Well, you know, it's funny because I, earlier I said that, so you have in the Jewish religion, and I, and I think it is what you said, the more religious ones, perhaps the Hasidics, and, you know, I and I have heard from Jewish people that I know that, yes, that, that sex is, you know, a ways to a means, yeah. in other words, to procreate. Yeah. Not for pleasure per se, but to achieve an end result. But I'm bum. <laughs> that is not pleasure, although you may experience pleasure from it. But that's really not the main goal. So I had when I lived in New York, I had a friend that was from the Pakistani culture, and they had a lot of really rigid perceptions on relationships and sex. Yeah, and it's hard. I think you know when your parents are coming from these countries and then you're growing up here you know i think it's it's a very hard transition you're it's the old with the new and you don't know where you fit in and and i think that creates a lot of issues too in the in the sex world for you where you you're really not knowing 
Yeah. Is, is this allowed? Is this not allowed? Am I am I a terrible person for doing this or not? Yeah, I could see how that would feel conflicted. Yeah, especially if you're you grew up being raised obviously in a certain way and like not not only about obviously sex, but you know, this is the person for you and this is the person we promised, you know, like arranged marriages and stuff like that. And then I can't even imagine somebody like that coming here. Like, there's so many choices. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh my God, you know, how do you stay? Like, that's, yeah. that's tricky. You know, again, and if, if you were raised to believe that you got to stay pure until you're married, then I don't know how... Have you ever watched that show? I, I mean, I think it was on Blue Bear Wars. I've never been a king like that. Or, you know, I don't know. If yeah, it was, it was like a really, or yeah. One of those where, you know, the, these young people, and not even that young, I yeah. don't think. Yeah. They, it's almost as if they never had a relationship. Well, and, they never and, did. Right. And they, they never, never even kissed anybody. Or kissed anybody. Right? Yeah. So I was traumatized when I saw <laughs> I remember seeing a clip, I think, on Ellen. Ellen put it on oh, one time. Lord. And it was like the couple at the altar kissing. getting, yeah, kissing. <gasps> oh, my God. That was the worst kiss oh of life. Oh, my God. It was like they were biting. They look like those little sucky fish things that you buy for your fish tank. Yeah. That, like the algae eaters. That's what they look like. And they were like sucking each other's I know, face and the that mouth. Was like a little and sad. licking each other like they were Labradors or something. Yeah. I don't know. It was... I, I looked at that and I was like, what the hell am yeah, I watching? I know. <laughs> I remember seeing that. And the same thing like when like, you know, the Duggars, like when they do that, uh, what's it, 19 Kids and Counting? That's so strange. But when, you know, at least these kids are like young, you know, so at least, you know, they're like in their teens, basically, like 19 or like, the most seriously, like 20. that couple from that show gave meaning to sucking face. Yeah. <laughs> that was just, that was Hopefully trauma. they've gotten better at it. That was trauma. Yeah. And then the guy kept <laughs> the guy kept like backing away from her because she was so aggressive. <laughs> and then the guy, I think he was getting like annoyed already. He's like, All right, stop. But he didn't want to tell her to stop, but it was just so sad. Go to YouTube people and watch a video on how to kiss somebody. I don't know. Watch that's... some porn, I don't know. Yeah. Do whatever. Bottom line, in closing, practice makes perfect all types of practices we can get out there so just enjoy it it's just sex you know bottoms up or down yeah <laughs> we're not judging use protection always use protection in today's miami with me segment we're going to be talking about one of my favorite snacks all-time snacks oh croquetas so yummy yummy <laughs> croquetas croquettes you know, and how about croquettes in Cuban bread? <gasps> Pan con croqueta preparada. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> you know, when I moved here from New York, I was like, what the, What is that? They don't I have that in New York? I don't know, but I never ate that in oh New York. Oh, my God. Are you serious? I'm serious. I was so not Cuban in New York. But there's no, like, Cuban bakery or anything? I'm sure, York? but I never went to any. <laughs> the closest Cuban bakery I knew was Josefina Bakery in my mother's kitchen. That's it. I mean, she makes, like, freaking awesome stroquetas, I mean, yeah. tamales. Nothing oh, beats my God. So a Cuban good. mom's cooking. Nothing beats your own mom's cooking. Let's be Correct. honest. Whatever, whatever background you're from, nothing beats your mom's cooking. You know, cooking. There's no. just there's no beating that. But you can go to your friend's mother's Cuban that kitchen. That is that you can do that which too, which is yummy too. Or your abuelas. Oh my god, my abuela. Hi, <laughs> my little abuelita. Paz descanse. My abuela was a great cook. Great, great cook. Yeah, she's made um, stuff. Well, we are spoiled here in the MIA because we have croquetas coming out of our ears. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Honestly, we got so many bakeries, like literally, like in every corner, you can find. Any type of croqueta. So Jamón, good. chicken, cheese, macalao. I don't like the cheese croquetas. They're not my favorite. They're too mushy. Actually, ham croquetas like are not my favorite. I like chicken and I like, I love a good bacalao croqueta. Love it. I've never had a good one. That Versailles weird. used to make really good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Versailles croquetas. You don't? No. I like, I like their bacalao ones. They're good. You know who makes, now that I, it's not even on my list, but uh gilbert's 
Gilbert's has Gilbert's Bakery people. Check them out. They have they have a lot of different flavors. They have bacalao. They have cheese, like pretty much all the time. So mm. check them out. They're really good. That Dos Croquetas place has a lot of different. Type well, Dos croquetas. croquetas that has like revolutionized the yummy. whole game. Like that just opened up recently, and everybody's like, "What? What? What do you mean? What flavor? What mac and cheese? What mm. Oreo croqueta? What?" <laughs> <laughs> that um, 305 croqueta was my favorite one. Dude, that, that one is like really a meal good. in itself. So that delicious. is The 305 croquetas, it's, you cannot get any more Cuban than that. It's picadillo, which is that, the ground beef, with platanito maduro frito, which is sweet fried mm. plantains, and cheese. I'm I guess, hungry. I guess the, the cheese, they got it to like, um, you know, a binding ingredient. cheese. Yeah, supposedly yeah. it has cheese, yeah. But it's so good. I, I think highly if recommend it. If they would have put rice, Yeah. Arroz con picadillo. All you need is a side of tomate and you got a meal. Yeah. Y un batido. Y un batido. Un batido de trigo. Oh my God. You roll out of there. You're like a big roly poly. Oh my God. So I'm, I'm like super lucky because that place is like literally around the corner from my house. Don't do it, Kathy. Stay oh my away God. from the light. Danger, danger. Abort, abort. Um, are they good? Yes. Are they going to kill the regular croquetas? Are they going to? No. I think we're still going to be going to, you know, all the other bakeries that we have and asking for. Yeah, you know? but what I like about them is that they're thinking out, outside of the box. Absolutely. And so it appeals to the old and, <laughs> and the, the new. <laughs> no, it's really cool because it is like a croqueta bar, which means they do sell uh, 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 alcohol well mm -hmm. they do sell beer they sell beer which I love that because these croquetas let's face it they're delicious but they're a little on the larger side they're a little on the heavy side because they're fried so it is you know it's a good place to go I think for a snack for like an after mm -hmm. you hang out and you want like a little snack before you go home I think that's a perfect place for it yeah they're big croquetas so when yeah. you're ordering be mindful because they when we big. were there there was a couple who had ordered like a ton way <laughs> off way off the guy yeah. was like how are we gonna eat all yeah. this i was like we'll help you <laughs> it was a lot but they are really tasty and they have a mac and cheese one which is delicious too they have one that's like buffalo chicken that one i taste that was amazing that was did i try that no because i went again i cheated on you <laughs> Oh my god, you hurt my heart. I've gone twice, <laughs> twice. Why and it's really babe? good. And their sauces, hello. Can you beat a leche condensada? You oh know, god. una croqueta with leche condensada? I mean, genius. genius. I love leche condensada. Like, I'm a crazy right now. I could just <laughs> drink it out of the can. Yeah. So good. Yes. So, very good idea. Very cool. The owner, Alec, is really young guy. A really young entrepreneur. We wish him the best. I mean, it's really, really cute place. Check it out because, and they also have croqueta preparada, and um, it's really good. I, I, I really like it. Yeah. I, you know, it's a definite checkout. Absolutely. And um, have you been to Buya? This was like in your neighborhood. I know where the you know I pass this place all the time, and it's jam packed. Yeah, I'm like, I need to be there for some happy hour yeah. action. But apparently, they have like really good croquetas with. Fig yes. jelly. Yes. Yum. These people, there's like, I think there's like three locations now. Coral Gables, Doral, and they're going to open by the Falls, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, Pinecrest area. That place is really good. It's, it's like a tapas Spanish place, but their croquetas are really good. They're like, you know, served like round with that fig jelly. Oh my God. You you, you can't get enough of it. Like you got to order like... <laughs> multiple orders because I, I think, think it's like that would be a good combination once it, like if they had little cheese balls with little croqueta mm -hmm. balls with the fig mm -mm -mm. yummy another place another favorite down here is Islas Canarias that is like really really Cuban they are huge I mean these people they're a restaurant they have a drive through and I guarantee most of the drive through people are for, for the croquetas that's so great that they have a yes. drive through I've been through that drive through yeah. and it's amazing yeah you, i mean more spanish restaurants and places should do that yeah i mean the place the the croquetas are really good they're huge they're probably the biggest ones that you can get they're like over a dollar each but you get your money's worth they're really big and they're made with bechamel sauce they are so yummy delicious. that doesn't give you cholesterol <laughs> Eat up. cuban food doesn't give you Nada cholesterol, te da cholesterol. <laughs> okay Comedelo. 
like clog your <laughs> arteries, but you know, no, no cholesterol. No cholesterol. No. Well, do you know, I mean, if you really want to know about croquetas and stuff, there's, there's, also, there's also a competition every year that's called Croqueta Palooza, which I've never been to, but I'm tempted to check them out this year. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's like, get your croqueta on big time. <laughs> Go without eating and yeah. fill up on croquetas. <laughs> I wonder what are the flavors they come up with. But if you're interested, check them out. Um, they're gonna be it's gonna be November first at the Miami Magic City Casino. So you gotta be over eighteen mm. to go and check it out. But uh probably before over twenty one honestly because it's uh Yeah, well, and you could do a little casino action yeah. too while you're at it. So we're gonna check out Croqueta Palusa. So Stay tuned. So eat your croquetas, eat your, you know, have your daily dose of croquetas. There's never a shortage here in Miami. So there's always a good place to get your croqueta on. Yes. And if you don't want to go out anywhere, go to your mama's croqueta bakery <laughs> in her kitchen. And I'm sure those are just as good. Okay. So this is our Miami segment for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Hasta la bye bye. Hi, everyone. We're on YouTube, Google Play Music, Spotify, Radio Public. Remember, share, like, and subscribe.